Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, The Going Developer, and I hope all of you are safe and healthy in your home. And uh, yeah, you can see that it's been a major studio upgrade, a setup upgrade from my side. A lot of savings and time and effort went into this. Uh, just uh, write, in, uh, write down in the comments how you feel about this uh, setup. And so yeah, without wasting any time, let's quickly jump into today's topic, which is HTTP POST. The Growing Developer Let's quickly see what URL we'll be using uh, for this tutorial. So as you all know, I'll be using a free service, which is JSON placeholder. So what this URL, as you can see on the screen as well, does is whatever you send it to the server, it just returns it back. So it is uh, totally fine for us to check uh, the HTTP post request. Yeah. So let's quickly uh, dive into the coding. Now for this HTTP, any kind of HTTP request, we're going to need an HTTP package. So it's in the pubspec.yaml file, you can install it. And then let's quickly import the HTTP package. To save some time, what I'm going to do is I'm just uh, going to write a simple method in the same file. Generally, it's a better and professional approach to divide your concepts and functionality into different different uh, modules, as I've already discussed in uh, my earlier video. So let's quickly create a method known as post data. Now it will be var response equals to await http dot post in goes uri dot parse and I'm just gonna paste the JSON placeholder URI here. Now the next important property why this post was implemented or introduced is to send uh, some data to the server. So it has the body parameter. Now body parameter accepts a data type of map. One thing that you need to take care in this part is that whenever you are passing data into the body format, just uh, throw some exceptions when you are sending an integer to some key. So it's always better to convert that integer into a string value by using dot to string. So as you can see, I have already used a dummy map data. I don't have any concern about the response code and, and all. We'll, we'll discuss in the later part of the video. So this method will be called inside the floating action button, of course. So yeah, let's just check how it works. So restart this application once. And now if I click on this floating action button, you can see that I got the data that we have sent to the server. The exact same data is being printed here. Now let's move on to the error handling, which is very important while handling or making any request to the server. There are many status code that we can have that is 200, 400, 404 and 500 as well. So it's always better to, uh, you know, uh, take care of all this status code. Right now, what I'm going to do is I will just uh, think about the exception handling basically. So I'll just put uh, quickly put this code into try and catch. So whatever code is inside try will be executed and if I get any of the exception instead of having the red screen that we all hate so much, we will catch the exception in the catch block and we'll just print. Right now we'll just print the exception. So what exactly happens in the real world application is that whatever exception is thrown by any of our requests, it is shown as a dialogue, a pop up or a snack bar which shows that some internet, internet connection uh, error or any server error whatever it be that's how we're gonna cast the exception and display to the users yeah. that was all about today's uh, tutorial hope you like this tutorial very much and any suggestions any feedback uh, was it good was it bad what all topics you want me to consider into future you can definitely just write it in in the comments or you can definitely go to growingdeveloper.org and just send your email through the contact us section. I will definitely reply you back. So yeah, that's that's all about this video. Hope you like this video. Enjoy this video. Hope you learned something from this video. Thank you so much for watching this video. 